the world might feel a bit more chaotic and a bit more divided. It's easy to forget sometimes that there are constants. Your home's still your home, your family's still your family, and all the structures of our society are still there to look after you if you need it. Here we go. George's resource. Adult male, code red trauma, 10 minutes. Activate the helipad. There's been an explosion on a building site. Part red 200. Open your eyes, open your eyes. Imagine having to work here. Hello, Annie, can I help? St George's, London. It's all going to kick off now. One of Britain's busiest A&E departments. Are we ready to roll? We'll carry on CPI. Oh, goodness me, it's all happening, isn't it? We need to fix that or you won't survive. Who's it? Uh... A place where life... Would you say I was fit, Doctor? Honestly, I think I'm quite fit. Love. You are my everything. I love you, and it's OK. And loss. Oh, Mum. I'm so sorry. Unfold every single day. For every bad thing that you see, there is something equally wonderful out there. Aww. Filmed across one 24-hour period, these are the stories of a nation and its health service. I thought I was going to die. You're definitely not going to die. You've got too many good doctors and nurses here. When people experience really significant illness or injuries, we see people pull together, we see relationships get stronger, and we see people reflect on what really is the most important things in their life. Whatever happens, it's going to be OK. I love you. Love you too. Georges, people don't get unwell in an orderly fashion. That red phone will go off, and it will go off as and when we're needed, and we don't have control over that. I'll tell so you, hello. Hello. my name's Georgina. I'm one of the emergency doctors. I just need to take a look at you, OK? And you can sometimes feel like you're firefighting. Joe, tell them to stop, please. <laughs> we all get into medicine because we want to care for others. Nice and calm. Nothing's going to happen to you here, OK? But trying to provide the same level of care for every single one of those patients can be really hard. Big cannulas, please. Let's get rid of the trauma lines. Let's bring out the red bag. And you just have to keep going. You take it, Georgie, because you... I've done it. St George's. Ten minutes. Helipad. OK. All right, thank you. Bye. Adult female trauma, hems by air, ETA ten minutes. A 61-year-old woman is being airlifted to St George's after falling from her mobility scooter and becoming unconscious. It's a head injury with KSS hems, initial GCS low, now 14. Okay. Her daughter, Natalie, is on her way to the hospital. So I wake up and it was a beautiful day and thought it'd be nice to take my mum to Wisley Gardens because the gardens are beautiful there. I will activate the helipad. It was supposed to be a take our mind off of things kind of day. My two and a half year old was on the scooter with my mum. He thinks it's really fun to stand on the front. Grace, lift. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming down. There's a viewpoint at the top of a hill, really pretty flowers all the way up. Mum's quite close by, but it seems to be going a different way. And then I heard a scream. Please mind the doors. The whole world changed in a split second. She'd fallen backwards and they'd both come off the mobility scooter and she'd saved my son. She protected him. He was fine. 
Susan, take a deep breath in for me. Breathe in, Susan. I was shaking her and saying, wake up, Mum, wake up. If I can do anything. Count of three, one, two, three. All right, everybody band over. This is Susan, she's 61 years old. About 90 minutes ago on her mobility scooter, she's braked hard, been thrown backwards off it, banged the back of her head. Witness loss of consciousness for five minutes. On awaking was appropriate and then became confused with the GCS of 13 on our arrival. It's now 14, losing one for eyes. She's had a gram of IV paracetamol, two and a half of morphine, four of ondansetron and 25 mics of fentanyl. She's been stable en route. Susan? Susan, do you know where you are? When a patient's had a head injury and we're told that they've lost consciousness, that's what we would call a red flag. Can you stick out your tongue for me and open your mouth? An indicator that what has happened to them could potentially be quite serious. Trachea is central, not deviated. Head injuries can be really significant because of what's contained inside our head, so our brain. Susan, any pain when I press down? Susan, any pain when I squeeze? The brain controls everything in the body from breathing to my heart's beating. Susan, just some bright lights, is that all right? Open your eyes wide for us. And even a small trauma to the brain can actually have life-changing consequences. Can we get eight to CT scan, please? Uh, is that all right? Nice one, mate, thank you. I think when it's your mum, you just think that they're OK because they're the person that looks after you. But she was completely helpless. I thought that was it, that she was gone. Breathing. 61-year-old Sue is having an urgent CT scan after falling from her mobility scooter and being knocked unconscious. All right, sweetheart, we're going to slide you across. Ready? One, two, three. Sorry, Susan. Um, Susan, are you allergic to anything? Any heart problems? Any problems with your kidney? No? OK, fine. Her husband and daughter are waiting in the relatives' room. When I met Sue, I had two children from my first marriage, two children from my second marriage, and I wasn't looking for another relationship. I like being free and single. So I'll pop this hand here, that's it, and then same with this hand. I think I've been on my own a couple of years going through a divorce. And I was living with my mother at the time. And my mother, she said, you're taking your boys to a pantomime in Woking. It's New Year's Day, I think it was. So we went along and, uh, yeah, Jack and the Beanstalk, like any pantomime. And these two boys went up on stage and my sons, who were with me at the time, said, we know them, we go to school with them. So my boys wanted to go and look for their friends. I didn't know we were Sue's children. During the interval, we found the boys and there was this dishy blonde there. And I thought, hmm, I quite like you. She didn't have a wedding ring on, so I thought, my chances are in here. I think she was going through a divorce and we just got on like a house on fire. She had all this lovely curly hair, which I thought was great. Anyway, I did my usual thing, chat, 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 chat. Invited myself back to her house, I think it was the following day. A few weeks later, I moved in with her and uh, it's been 27 years we've been together. In Sue, I found a soulmate. I think Sue loved me even more because I accepted her children. 
Sue had three children. They were little toe rags at the time, but I accepted them and she, she liked that. My life sort of changed from being a selfish person to, oh gosh, I've got to spread myself around all these people. We did things. We had a caravan down in Southampton for a while, and at weekends we used to all pile in the car and go down there. Sue we used to have pet ducks at the time, and we used to take them with us. We had jet skis, and we used to ride on the beach on motorbikes. We had boats. We really enjoyed it. So, yeah, all done. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, as time progressed, she said, I, I just can't do this stuff anymore. And I knew that she was in pain. We thought that was the beginning of the end. Emergency department, can I help you? Oh, babe, you look morbid. There you go. Hello, Mummy. <coughs> mummy and Daddy. Do not go swimming. Do you think you'll feel better if you go swimming this afternoon? Yeah. Good, that's OK then. That's a good sign. Hello, Gerald. I'm sitting up in St George's at the moment. I was balanced on the ladder and it just slid away from me. I had a complete body scan. Yeah, said they couldn't find a brain. Well, anyway. Let's look at this bump. You able to lift your head up? Sorry. I got attracted to A&E when I was very small. Oh, there it is. When I was little, I used to have trouble with my breathing and my mum had to take me into hospital. And I remember being really scared. I couldn't breathe. I could see in my mum's face she was worried. And this doctor came in, she was smiling, and she said, hi, Georgie, I'm just going to take a listen to your chest. And then she said, we're going to get you a special mask. I remember this mask going on my face and I remember being able to breathe and I remember thinking, I want to be like her. I don't have any stitches, is it? I think it could do with something going in there, sir. Probably needs a couple of staples, at least. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get you sorted, all right? GCS 13. OK, thank you. And that's KSS by land, fall downstairs with a closed head injury, GCS 13, but he's on a Pixaban. Mm -hmm. Adult male trauma call, ETA 10 minutes. Cheers, dude. I'll sort out the scan. A 78-year-old man is being rushed to St George's after falling down the stairs and hitting his head. His wife, Jean, is travelling with him in the ambulance. And we'd had a nice meal, and we finished with Magnum ice creams, which um, we didn't normally have, but they happened to be in the freezer. It was just getting sort of slightly dark. I settled down to watch TV, and Ted said he would go up to bed to read his book. He went out of the room and started going up the stairs, and then I heard tumble, tumble, tumble. His feet were on the bottom step of the stairs, and the rest of his body was across the hall. He wasn't responding at all, couldn't hear any breathing. So I kept saying, Ted, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are you all right? No answer. Okay. 
silence. He just was silent. Eamon, we're going to have to do a bit of a lift and a move across. Is that OK? <laughs> Would you mind telling me? OK, so this is Ted, 78 year old man, yeah. heard to fall downstairs by his wife, who's in the relative's room. OK. Uh, apparently, with CCAM's arrival, his initial GCS was three, increased okay. to eight, which is why we were involved. On our arrival, his GCS 13, motor score of six. OK. Um, his eyes opening to voice, and he, he's not really orientated. Thank you very much. Cheers. You have to start a primary for me, please. Thank you very much. As we get a little bit older, our bodies can become more frail. And when we fall, the potential injuries that we get can be more significant. And when we hear that someone's fallen down the stairs, there are multiple points of injury that could have happened as they've gone down that we need to be aware of. No hyperresonance, no clear chest segment. And then the patient themselves, what medication they're on, can make huge impacts on how we care for them. He was an unwitnessed fall downstairs, okay. Hazel, but it's currently, as you can see now, slightly just a little bit agitated. Marked head injury on the right-hand side. But he is a fall on a Pixaban. Yeah. A Pixaban is a anticoagulant, so a blood thinner. Sir, can you squeeze my hand for me? Just squeeze my hand. Good man, Sim Six. When someone's had a head injury and they're on blood thinners, that head injury could potentially be worse because of the medication they're on, because they're more likely to bleed. And the greater chance of them having a bleed on the brain. You're in St George's. We're going to get you sorted. But um, you're going to have to lie still for me so that we can do a scan, OK? Can we bring a patient round for a scan, please? As a trauma patient, is that all right? Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Awesome. Ted, it had lots of other illnesses. We managed quite well. But when he fell, I realised it was a serious incident. I really thought that he might not recover. That was my main fear. I don't know if this man's going to stay still, but we will see. Uh, let me just... Keep your arms down, keep still. Keep still for me, Ted. Good man. OK, so we're ready. Ready, steady, slide. Perfect. 78-year-old Ted is having an urgent CT scan after falling down the stairs and hitting his head. He was unconscious for several minutes and then became severely agitated. Right, Ted. Yeah. Remember that scan I told you about? Yeah. Lay nice and still for me. Yeah. Good man. You just relax. Have a little sleep, all right? Yes. His wife, Jean, daughter, Catherine, and granddaughter, Emily, are in the relative's room. I was born in Heston, Middlesex. But unfortunately, my mother died when I was nine and my sister was seven. She had had rheumatic fever as a child and it left her with a weak heart. She died on the operating table. And I remember everyone crying. It was just awful. And we went back to school the next day. That was it. That's how it was in our house. <laughs> you just got on with life. That's it. Well done. Stay there for me, yeah? Then it was left to my dad to bring up my sister and I. I remember sitting on the table while he used to uh, wash our knees if we'd been out playing, made sure we ate right and had clothes and things. It was very nice, but I don't think he wanted us mixing with boys. Uh, you know, not having a mother, he thought we might go a bit 
wild, perhaps. Destined to move. Well, I first met Ted at his friend Frank's 21st birthday party. So I had a boyfriend at the time, but then I saw Ted there and I thought, hmm, maybe he'd be better than the one I'm with. <laughs> so we sort of fixed a date for us to meet. Ted had a car. I was sitting in the front and he, you know, gradually held my hand. And I remember smiling. <laughs> Breathe in and hold your breath. I knew my dad would uh, say, you shouldn't have sex before you get married. So I thought, right, we get married quickly then. <laughs> Obviously, I was in love with him. I thought we could, you know, make a good life together and have a good time. And I know, looking back, I suppose we did. So he's in CT now? Did well, they say that they he's, said they were taking him now. for the scan. Well, I shouldn't think it takes too long. But then someone has to look at it. Yeah. Decide what's what. Mm. Mm. It's quite a big bleed. Significant. Dear. Bleed on the brain is almost like a bruise which you can't see because it's contained within the skull. If the bleeding on the brain doesn't stop, then that can cause increased pressure on the brain and that can lead to life-threatening consequences. As soon as you walked in the door, everything just went haywire. You've got a big old cut here, actually, sir, having brought all the hair back. Hair yeah. Ooh. Sorry, sharp coming now. Falling into bits, and I? Falling to pieces. If you continue throwing yourself off eight foot drops, yeah, then, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, men of my age, I should know better. Sorry, sir. Hello. Yeah, I'm with her now. She's still out, out of it. It's quite serious. And she's not conscious, shall we say. She's not conscious. Drowsy, asleep. Doesn't know I'm here. Not really. Sue has sustained a head injury after an accident with her mobility scooter during a day out with her family. It's horrible seeing her like this. She's just lying dead still with a neck neck brace on. All right. So it's it's not it's not nice. Doctors are awaiting the results of her CT scan. Sue so, was a very active person. She was always running, playing tennis, jumping around. But she'd never had a proper holiday. So I arranged a special trip for her, for her birthday. But Sue never had a passport, so I had to get her one. In the morning, I said, oh, happy birthday. What's this? I said, it's a passport, but I don't have one. You do now. Where are we going? I said, we're flying to Holland. So she thought this was absolutely amazing. And we had a wonderful time just walking around Amsterdam. Here, Mum. You've got lots of things stuck in you, lovey. Yeah. I oh, know, I'm sorry. I 
can't exactly remember how she started to deteriorate. It was only her telling me that she's, she's now suffering. My arms hurt, my legs hurt, my joints hurt. Why is that? So we went to see specialists and it turns out she had osteoarthritis. She was only 50 at the time. Susan, can you open your eyes for me? Susan. Sue had two hips and a knee replaced. We talked to people and they said that would get rid of it all. She'd be able to play tennis again, she'd be able to run again. But these things never happened, of course. Unfortunately, the left side of her body, the left hip and the left knee were not done correctly. The surgeons just said, sorry, you're going to be a cripple for the rest of your life. It was horrible. Susan. In pain. In the head. In your tummy. The scooter landed on her. Okay. Is the light bothering you? Yes. When you see a patient who has been injured, complaints of abdominal pain can be quite serious because there are multiple really important organs that sit within the abdomen that could have been damaged or there could be internal bleeding. And if it's not caught early, they could bleed to death. She was complaining of ongoing abdominal pain right. and the mobility scooter fell on her. Yeah. She's still got ongoing headache, is a bit confused, GCS 13. And so should we just scan the rest of her? Yeah, the more you think about it, the more we should mm. do it then. We're still quite worried about this tummy pain. Yeah. So we're going to just scan the rest. Mum? They're going to do another scan on your tummy. Going to check your tummy. See them a bit. Let me know when you want a break and I'll cover you. Okay. Ted is in A&E after falling down the stairs and hitting his head. CT scans have revealed a bleed on his brain and doctors are consulting specialists to assess the damage. Brain injuries can not only be quite traumatic for the patient, but also their family members around them. Ted, yeah. gonna get your other half in, my friend, okay? The risk with a bad head injury is that that person may not be the same afterwards as they were before it all happened, and that could be permanent. Ted's family are now able to see him for the first time since he fell. Ted, look who we have. Look who's here. Hello. Hi, Grandad. Mm. That's Catherine, and, and I'm here, Ted. Yes. You know who I am? No. Who am I? No. You don't know? No. I'm Jean, I'm your wife. <laughs> I'm surprised he can't even recognise you. Mm. Ted? I don't want him to get agitated. Yes. No. Is it? So we've seen the scan. Yeah. Don't try and get up. Look, he has got some bleeding in the brain. Okay. Okay. In his head. Okay. So we're giving him medicine to reverse his blood thinner yeah. okay. yeah. at the moment to try and reduce the bleeding. Okay. And we're going to speak to the neurosurgeons. I don't think he'd need surgery right now. Okay. But I just need to get their advice about what we need to do. Okay. okay? Yeah. All right. Ted and I got married in September 64. 
we didn't sort of hang around. <laughs> our honeymoon. We went to Cornwall for just a week. And Ted hadn't booked anything, thinking that you'd just turn up at a hotel <laughs> and ask for a bed. <laughs> so every single hotel was full. And eventually, we found one place that said, well, we've got this overspill room you could have. But we had a lovely week there. Okay. I hear he likes to be called Ted, is that right? Ted, Ted. Ted. Ted? Yeah. Hello. Do you mind if I just shine a light in your eyes? Yeah. Is that all right? You able to just look straight at me? Can you open them again? There we go. Catherine came along on the exact date of our wedding. And Robert came two years later. Yeah, it was lovely. Family complete. Thank you. D Grandad, don't try and get up. Don't try and get Just up. Just lay still, lay still. Hmm? Why not? Mm. Because you'll fall out of this bed. Yeah. And you're not very modest you've got, at the moment. No, you've got <laughs> nothing on underneath. You haven't got your pyjamas on. <laughs> Dad, he was very patient, very kind, gentle, and would help me with homework, and he had a brilliant sense of humour. He used to make us laugh on silly little things. If ever I made something and went to show him, he would always say to me, a blind man would be pleased to see it. <laughs> You're right, Mum. Mm -hmm. You're tired. Later on, after um, Dad had retired, Mum and Dad were leading quite a normal, happy life together. Until everything changed. How are you feeling? Yeah. With the fairies? Do you know where you are? Which hospital? Hmm? Holby. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's no such hospital as Holby. Sue is awaiting the results of her CT scans to her neck and her abdomen. Doctors are worried she's sustained abdominal injuries as well as the impacts to her head. I got some spinnakers for you. Got your toothbrush. I think we even brought a bra. And night your red night dress. So to be told that uh, she's going to be a cripple for the rest of her life. That was a big blow for us. Made me think a lot harder about my life. Not being so selfish, I suppose, and yeah, looking after her. I considered myself a carer in shadows. I was there, if she needed something, she would mention, oh, by the way, I'm having difficulties in doing this. So she could only walk about 30 meters. And the whole house had to be adapted to her needs. Whether it be a walk-in shower, whether it be toilets, opening and closing doors, just modify it so it suited her needs. I'm back, mummy. Hello. Well, that's nice to see a smile. Yeah, I've got a smile out of her. She hated the idea of having a house that was built with uh, disabled bits and pieces. I wanted to put a rail outside the front door. She said, I'd rather fall than have a rail. She's a type of woman who, if she's hurting, she won't let you know. Won't let you know. You thirsty? No. Prosecco? No. 
It's not the weekend. When she knew she had to have an automatic car, what kind of car were you like? I want a pink Mini. So we managed to find one and she absolutely loved it and loved me because I took the trouble to find her something which she would love. Susan? Hello? Your scan was normal. Excellent. Do you still feel a bit funny? Mm. OK. Mm. Is it just on the head that it hurts? Mm. Whereabouts? Ooh. Whereabouts on your head? Abdominal scan was normal, oh, okay. so oh, cool. we've not done any damage with the fall. So it's just the wow. concussion. So until you're more, a bit more awake, I can't get you home. Yeah. The head will be sore, but there's nothing dangerous on there. OK? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Do you want some more water? Yeah? Yes, I'm there to care for her. I'm there to look after her. And it's what you do for your partner. Giving her things to enable her to do that little bit extra in order to be happy. Silly thing. Got us all worried. I'm going to look what happened to this code red earlier. When things get really busy at work and you're trying to pull yourself in, eight, nine, ten different directions. It can be incredibly difficult oh. to provide that care that we all want to. Sometimes you need to have a moment and step back and remind yourself why you're doing this. And then you see how caring people can be at times of such horror when they're in A&E, going through awful things and difficult moments like a family coming together. And it is so beautiful to see. And it reminds you that at the centre of it all, those values of being there for your loved ones is probably what matters most. Gosh, it's one o'clock. the lights down a little bit for him. That'll be nicer. It was 2003. We'd been to a party and I thought his speech is a bit slurred, but then that was, you know, probably quite normal when he'd had a few beers. But the next morning, Ted said he was going to get the paper. And I thought, hmm, your speech still isn't right. I said, I'm going to ring the doctors. And um, the doctor sent him off straight away to A&E at Frimley Park. They said it was a stroke. I better have a bit of sugar to keep me, keep me going. I've got a biscuit as well if you want a gluten-free biscuit. Oh, why have I got all the same colours? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. After he'd had that stroke, it seemed that Every year there was something else that um, Dad would have medically wrong with him, you know, became diabetic. He had a drip in his arm for some infection that he had, but we were doing all his intravenous drugs at home. <laughs> but despite all his illnesses, he was still the same person. 
Oh, yeah. You're right. He, um, yes. My name's Mother and I'm one of the doctors. <laughs> um, your family members, right? Yeah. How are you related? Wife, Wife daughter, daughter, granddaughter. granddaughter. Okay, fine. Uh, I think you were told there's a problem in, in the brain. Yeah. You know, there's different types of brain bleeds and some are going to need operations, others they monitor and they feel this needs monitoring. Other things to mention are unsure what level of independence he'll get back to after this. I.e. in terms of conversing or agitation or mobility, etc., etc. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. If you do, come here. Oh. So he might not be as independent. What do you reckon that will mean, Liz? Do you reckon you'll need something to come Or he'll stay in? aggravated. Um, That's not fun. She'll have to understand. That he, it's because of that. It's going to be um, worse. We might have to move the bed downstairs into the dining room. Yeah, I'd suggest. Or else sell the house and get, get a out. bungalow. Oh well. We'll think of something. Well, when I was younger, you know, with losing my mother, I saw how my aunts and my dad were very kind and supportive. So I've been surrounded by people helping one another who have always looked after their own. So we just got on with life. You never know what's around the corner. Probably just as well, but we don't know. There's a bed for him on um, Gunning Ward, so we'll take him up Gunning shortly. Ward? Yeah. Ted will be taken to a specialist ward where doctors will continue to assess the damage to his brain and decide whether he'll need emergency surgery. Do you guys want to follow up? Yeah. to see her and she was very sleepy. We just couldn't wake her up at all. So we called another ambulance. She wasn't reacting to any of the shouting or any of the tests they were doing, trying to get a response from her. I feel lucky to be alive and I've got so much to look forward to and I'm just going to go for it. Mike has looked after me and the kids since day one. He's always there. I love him and I think he loves me. I know he does. <laughs> It was very worrying when he was in hospital for so long and not showing any improvement. And some days he didn't know where he was. Some days he was almost comatose. Oh, 
they did say once home, he probably would really improve, and he has. I'll look after Ted as long as necessary. I said, you might one day have to look after me. What are we going to do then? <laughs> How much do you love your Jean? A lot. 